everyone, so before I even start, I wanted to let you know this is going to be a two-part video. The first part is going to be a You're Not Stupid guide on getting the MT-32 to work in DOS nowadays. And uh, the second part is, which I had a lot of fun with, but uh, just it's too long to fit in this one. The second part is going to be me fiddling around with the MT-32 on a real keyboard and making some real music with it. So I think both are equally enjoyable, but uh, one is more computer-oriented, one is more uh, look into the MT-32 as a synthesizer. So I'm going to split them up. So uh, yeah, in case you want to look at that now, I'll give you a link to it. If not, here's the rest of my review for the MT-32 in DOS. The Roland MT-32 is kind of the pride of my uh, computer collection. Not necessarily because I like it that much. I mean, yeah, I still think that the uh, Amiga sounds better than it most of the time. But uh, compared to the Sound Blaster, which I lived with for many years, I hated it. I hated it. I just hate the FM synthesized bullshit, 1960s technology in DOS games. Sometimes I can give it a pass when it was on, on like the Sega Genesis, because the Sega Genesis could sometimes do some stuff, although sometimes I think it was through like, you know, s s sampled stuff, because I think the Genesis could do sampled stuff just like the Amiga could, but, uh, but sometimes they did make the FM music shine on the Genesis. DOS, it's, it almost never happens. <laughs> Especially with the original, like AdLib. AdLib was supported a lot longer than most people think. Even Origin, up until 1990. Wing Commander 3 had support. Like, their Sound Blaster support was technically AdLib. Even though they didn't have... A, like, there was no option for AdLib at that point for Wing Commander 3. But Origin still used it. It was like... They didn't. They never graduated into like, you know, the newer Sound Blaster stuff because you could do some stuff with like OPL three and stuff could sound okay, but like a lot of the companies just stuck with AdLib for the entire ride of Sound Blaster stuff. So it just, I hate the FM stuff because like I I, I just don't like AdLib. It just and as much of the Sound Blaster library is that AdLib crap. I just can't stand it. This fixes a lot of that early stuff. It makes it sound just heavenly compared to a Sound Blaster card. So, and it costs, and it costs so much <laughs> to get this together. And it's like, it's not just this unit. No, not just that unit. You need this unit and this card in order to get it to work. And you need cables. <laughs> and all together, it costs like $300 five years ago to have it, you know. <laughs> I'm sure, like, there's all, there always seems to be at least one of every particular unit available on eBay, but they always go for ridiculous prices. Nevertheless, I'm happy to have it because it makes so many games sound so much better in DOS. And I, I it's just, yeah, it's like a pride, pride and joy for me. Like, I really do enjoy the unit. But the thing about it is, I suffered through many years. I grew up with the Amiga. I grew up with good music. And uh, in about 1995 or whatever, we got our first PC. And a lot of the games were still on DOS back then. And you know, so we played a lot of DOS games. And you know, I'd get into some of the older games. And they just sounded terrible. And I'd play some of the games. And that's what first got me into emulation, was like I'd play these games that used to be on the Amiga. And I played them on DOS, and I'm like, oh my god, this is god-awful! It sounds terrible! Either they were on PC Speaker, or they were on AdLib, or Sound Blaster, they just didn't sound good. This sucker was available back then, and it was expensive as all hell, nobody bought it, you know. And it wasn't even, it wasn't technically, you know, a sound card or anything. This is a genuine 1980s synthesizer. You know, it was meant to be hooked up to keyboards and played, you know, <laughs> and it, and it would, and it did a god awful job at that. By the way, like it, this got horrible reviews from the professional music associations. You know, like people did not like this thing. It was terrible sounding. You know, 
to, you know, compared to what they were used to. Like this was a cheap model for consumers, <laughs> but it was too expensive for consumers. And it sounded like you couldn't do a piano to save its fucking life, you know. <laughs> but it could, but it could make some very nice, like, you know, strings and orchestra sounds and you know some other things. It could make. It had some very nice sounds, and it what what it did. And the reason it is, you know. Holy Grail among computer collectors is it took what was god awful in the Sound Blaster cards and it made them something great. And it's the best option you have until the mid 90s when other general MIDI type of things came around. So for like the like late 80s through early 90s, this is the best option for a lot of uh, computer games. So it's the Holy Grail of computer of DOS era sound. Way up here. But what it was designed for to be a synthesizer to hook up to a keyboard to make music with way, way at the bottom of the barrel. So you should, everybody should keep that in mind when they talk about this thing. It's like, yeah, it's great for DOS. Uh, it's a piece of shit synthesizer. <laughs> But the great, but it's a holy grail item, and, and I love having it. And it makes, you know, having grown up on the Amiga, listening to good music and going over to DOS, I can like there are people that really, really like the DOS era FM shit, and I think they're just brainwashed because they grew up on that shit. And I will say it's shit. It's god awful shit. They, and you know, some of it is okay, like OPL3 stuff, but that's already in mid-90s, and by then you have general MIDI stuff available. And I'm sorry for all you people that were, you know, had the misfortune of growing up with that shitty sound. But this is a holy grail item because uh, it makes shit sound better, and I love it. But uh, it's kind of a complicated piece of crap. It, just to get a hold of it, it's $100 for this unit, which is the synthesizer itself. But in order to connect it to a computer, you need some more shit. You need this, a MIDI processing unit called the MPU-401. And you need this device. This is a uh, MPU IPCT. This is the device. Like the, This goes into the computer, and you have... A cord that goes into this, okay, yeah, right here, goes in there. Then you got to connect this to the synthesizer, and you got to connect the synthesizer back to another sound card. You have to have two sound. You have to have another sound card. <laughs> so I'm going to show you in how to get a real MT32 to work with a real DOS machine and real hardware. You know they have come up with some options to skirt around uh, some of the limitations that this thing used to be. You used to have to have this shit in order to get it to work, period. Now you can kind of get away with it. Um, you know, they have like, there's software options, like somebody's wrote, written a DOS, somebody has written a DOS program to make it work a lot of the times without this thing. So maybe you should look into that. I actually have the program on my computer, but I use it for a different thing altogether, which I will show you. I don't actually use it for what it's uh, the main thing that most people use it for, which is to get around this stuff, because I have it. I'm going to show you with, around the MT32. I'm even going to play it with a keyboard, show you what it was actually designed for. And, uh, yeah, just, this is a lot of fun to have. I think, you know, this is, you know, real, real serious DOS people need to have this thing somehow. So you need to get a hold of it. And uh, it is expensive still, but, you know, you guys are grown up now. Come on. Spend a little money. Get the thing. <laughs> Hundred dollars for this. Hundred dollars for this. Hundred dollars for this. Eh. We have the Roland MT32. I put a little thing here. So This is so when I'm in the dark, I don't have to fucking look at the uh, freaking screens. I do this to all my shit. I hate things. Like, it's so much worse nowadays with blue LEDs. The blues are the worst. But uh, when it's dark, I don't like to see this shit, so I have a cover for it sometimes. But as you play music, they will light up, and I'll show you that later. But uh, this is the master thing. If you want to play this thing on a real uh, keyboard, you're going to want to press master volume and 5, which says change the channel, and you change it to channel 1. 
For whatever reason, this thing starts off in channel 2. Everything is programmed for channel 2 with the computers and everything. And all uh, keyboards and everything are start off in channel 1. So that's how you do it if you want to have to work. Power button's on the back. The volume button, which doesn't have too much use unless you have uh, both audio going from your uh, regular like sound blaster card, like speech, plus the MT32 running, so you, you'd want to change the volume so you get a good mix between the two. Press the sound, and, you know, you can go through the instruments, basses, electric bass, acoustic bass, whatever, that's on bass right now. There are ways to get the pianos and things. I never fucking learned how to, you know, do the greatest things with this, but... There's a piano, acoustic piano, organs, harpsichords, or whatever, and each one... I think you can press sound, and then you can change the types of pianos. Honky-tonk, electric, and everything, so there's things you can do with it. Behind it, we have... The power button there. We have the uh, power cord, six volts in. And we have three MIDI things. We have a, a MIDI throughput, a MIDI input, and a MIDI output. MIDI has always been backwards or whatever. The, the MIDI out goes to the MIDI in in whatever you're connecting it to. The MIDI out or the MIDI in goes to the MIDI out to whatever you're. It is, it's ass backwards or whatever. It's not. Uh, I always make the mistake of that. The MIDI through is if you want to also send it yeah, to another device besides what you already have it connected to. And it has audio outputs. Now these are, they got the big, they have the big sucker, phono sucker as a, uh, I forgot what the size of these are. I don't know, one fourth I think? I think that's the fraction. I don't know what they are in millimeters. So one fourth the size something anyway, then there's two of them. So you got one for the right channel, and you got one for the left channel. And you also have to get some kind of adapter, because you're going to want this connected to your sound card. And uh, what I have is, yeah, it goes all the way around, eventually comes to something like this. So I can connect it directly to, a, to my uh, Sound Blaster AW ah, to get the input there. So uh, these are the main things you need. Of course... Of course, we have our uh, MPU IPC. This is the MPU 401 card that has to go into your computer, into a spare ISA slot, an 8-bit slot. It also has IRQ settings, but don't fuck with this because uh, all the games are pretty much hardwired to work with IRQ2. So changing it will not will make it not work with those games because there's no options for those games. So just keep it on the main one. This card has a connection device, which goes to the MIDI processing unit, MPU, IPC T401, whatever, which has those, again, these uh, come around and they come into this. So you got the, got your MIDI cables, which you can still get at like Radio Shack and shit, if you can find a Radio Shack anymore, and you, you plug them up, you plug two of them in. You plug this one, which uh, is oddly barren. Look, look at that. Like, <laughs> they're only using like 10 fucking pins there. And you connect it to the card. Connect it to your computer, and you're off to the races. I'm going to take out my uh, Sound Blaster AW uh, so you can actually see the ISA slot this one's in. In it here, you'll see I got the two ISA slots here for my DOS computer. The MPU 401 card go in the bottom one. Nice connection. We're gonna screw it in. Our sound blaster. Oh, which I. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna hook the uh, PC speaker connection. Put our sound blaster uh, in here. We'll play. We'll 
surely do a bit of a review on that. I really like the Sound Blaster All Card. Very nice uh, general MIDI ish. It's actually not general MIDI, which is unfortunate because it makes the uh, card not work with some general MIDI games. It has to have specific drivers, but uh, with the ones that do have the drivers, it's great. You see behind here is the MPU 401 card. Over here, we have our MIDI processing unit, which is connected to the uh, MIDI cables, which is connected to the synthesizer. It also has, you know, things for like tapes, like a, like if you were to have like a tape unit, uh, you know, you could ha tell the thing to stop and crap or whatever. We don't need them to worry about that shit. Connect to that. And we'll need uh, this other card that takes the audio. And uh, we'll need to plug it into the Sound Blaster card. So you need another card. We'll do it to the uh, line in. So it goes right there. And uh, that's all you got to do for the hardware aspect. Now let's take a look at the uh, take a look at the software now. Once the MT32 is on your system, there isn't much you actually need to configure. You just make sure the IRQ2 is not being taken care of in the BIOS. You will want to check your Sound Blaster card or whatever other card you have installed where the MT32 is uh, going into. You'll want to check that to make sure that the audio ins are enabled. Uh, this is for my... Uh, Sound Blaster Aw. This is not the built-in one. This is a third-party one. I think it gives you more control. I never use it anyway. I think I set it... <laughs> you set it to what you want, and then you probably never use it again, but... Inputs. I got inputs, right and left, CD, line, MIDI, okay? They're all on. Oh, I think they're on. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. That means... I think that means they're muted. That means the right's coming out of the right and the left's coming out of the left. Yes. So all of these are on. Just make sure that crap is working. Otherwise, you're not going to get any sound through it. That's all you have to do. There's really absolutely nothing else you have to do. Just go to the game you want to go to. Let's see what games we have to show off. No MT32 uh, demonstration would be complete without going into Wing Commander. We'll uh, start with Wing Commander 1. This origin sound system. That means the MT32 is getting specific, uh, they call it SysX commands. Specific command, it's real. It's uploading instruments into it right now. It's own specific instruments that the you know creators of Wing Commander put in there, and that is what you're gonna get. If you're gonna get you, the MT32 is gonna sound its best when the people have taken the time to put their own instruments in it. Interestingly, this is uh, my favorite music in the in the Amiga version, and I don't really like it in this one. It's just so damn subtle in this one, which is, I guess, it's, it's something the MT32 could do. It could do very nice, subtle orchestral sounds. But in the case of Wing Commander, I always kind of like the, the Amiga boldness of it. Nice bar, nice music. You know, it couldn't do a. I think it's trying to do a piano in there, but uh, it's just going for the keyboard sound instead. It's MT32 could not do the piano. I do have a joystick for this, but I'm just I'm not fucking around with it right now. 
Never using the mouse, that was a pretty good shot. Very nice drums in it. Nice timpani. Really, the only way you're gonna get sound effects out of the MT32 is if uh, the, the developers took their time to put them in, because the MT32 did not come in with built-in sound effects. Really, it had a couple like synthy kind of sound effects you could use, you know, like telephones, like the traditional shit that you find in synthesizers. It had those, but you know, it was a synthesizer. <laughs> None of that crap was uh, meant for it. that like that was all uploaded into it so you there's a stark contrast to a game like Wing Commander which was built for the MT32 and uh, developed and loved on it and like a game like Monkey Island which you know was made for the MT32 but they didn't take their time to upload anything to it so there's no sound effects whatsoever on it. it's just music Nice funeral music. to uh, get the MT32 to work, all you gotta do is go to the install program of whatever uh, game you're running. <coughs> Here's Wing Commander. Rolling MT32 or LAPCI1. That's as simple as that. Although not as memorable as the first Wing Commander, or Wing Commander 3, it's, when, when, you're, when you're playing it, it is very good music. But here, I want to show you what the, uh, MT, here's the uh, MT32 trying its best. This is the best piano I ever heard on the MT32 because it was uploaded to it, but it still got awful. And here it is. That's the best piano I've ever heard on this MT32. And it's still not very good, but it is by far the best I ever heard on it. it it's kinda... kinda more electric than regular piano, but uh... It, it does its best. And yeah, I'm very impressed with the attempt because you will never hear a piano sound this good on this, on the MT32. For whatever reason, it could never do it. There, you can see, it goes to my piano. It's an uploaded instrument. I never wanted to look at you that close, Jazz. 
does what we're showing what goes on during normal processes. Obviously, it's showing the channels that are currently being played. And when the instruments change, it'll do that too. So it's got first channels being used, third one's being used, fourth one's being used, although you can't see it on my model. Bastard sold me a fucked up one. And the rhythm channel is being used. Volume is 62. You can change the volume, usually. Sometimes it'll take control over and you can't fuck with it at all. Get the fun rolling with Star Trek 25th Anniversary. One of my favorite adventure games. Here where you have voiceovers at the same time, you're gonna, you're gonna want to change the volume though. You want to want to balance the volume because you can't. Uh, only in the software can you mess with the audio levels of the voices. So here you can do it real time. Make the MT32 sound somewhere where the voices balance. Of course, the Great Monkey Island has to be included in any Roland MT32 thing. Now this one is not actually, uh, this one is just utilizing the MT32 itself. There is no, uh, special, uh, instruments being uploaded to it. So the, capable out of the box to do this. And it sounds good for what it is. Very rhythm, uh, oriented. I've always been kind of an audiophile, and I still I still listen to vinyl records. I've always always enjoyed uh, messing around with this stuff in DOS. So like I'm I am very happy to get the most the most out of my uh, sound, which is why I was never happy with the uh, sound blaster cards, the ad lib kind of music. I hated that shit. Compared to this, like this has stereo. This is just Exciting. I like it. <laughs> the MT32 was famous for first uh, coming to the computer via Sierra. Now, I don't like Sierra very much, at least in their adventure years. I do not like Sierra games. They were pieces of shit, honestly speaking. I hate them. I can enjoy some of the story to some of them, but as game designs, I absolutely cannot stand Sierra games. So I don't have any Sierra games to show you. I've played a lot of them over the years. I just do not keep them. <laughs> I don't like them. But I do have one Sierra-ish game that uses the MT-32, and that's Willy Beamish. It's about as rock and roll as you're ever going to get the MT-32 to the sound. Press enter. It says buffer overflow. Now this is a problem that happens in the uh, specific model MT32, the first generation model, when you throw in some newer type of games. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. I have a directory that deals with some MT32 little things I have, <clears throat> and uh, in there for this specific problem, I have something called the soft MPU. Soft MPU is, it can be used to get the MT32 to work with a regular Sound Blaster card hooked up to it via the joystick port without having to use the MPU 401, which I have. People use that for that. I don't use it for that. Um, 
Yeah, so I got the soft MPU active at port 330 IRQ5 apparently. So it should disable or delay the SysX command, which fucks up the uh, game sometimes. It'll stop it from sending instrument samples. So I don't actually think it's a problem with Monkey Island 2 because it's not actually using any custom instruments. So it doesn't matter with it, but uh, nevertheless, hopefully it won't do it this time when I uh, press enter. Let's see. It just keeps the MPU 401 logo on there the whole damn time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've been playing all the games that everybody else always plays when they do the MT2. Well, those are the games that sound the best with it, so. <laughs> How about this one? I bet you nobody else has shown you this, all right? This is a demo that uses the Roland MT32. Now, not many people got into the demos with the MT32, which is surprising to me because the MT32 is such an exclusive unit. It's like, <laughs> you had to have some money to have it. And you have, like, not only are you a computer nerd because you have it hooked up to your computer, but you're, you know, you have, like, music sensibilities, I guess, you know, you could easily hook it up to a synthesizer, so why wouldn't... It seems like it should have been, but I know why. It's because, uh, you know, it was for younger people. Younger people were the ones that were in the demo scene, and the MT-32 was way out of their price range, so they stuck to the Amiga, and then later, when they did go to DOS, it was with, you know, the sound card that sounded like an Amiga. Um, but here is one demo I did find that featured the MT-32, so check a look at this. after another configuration change. I don't understand how demos ever became a thing on DOS, ever. What were you people thinking when you left the Amiga for DOS? Yeah, this is just ridiculous. The amount of configurations, the amount of hardware available just makes no sense whatsoever to go from the Amiga to DOS for that shit. No, it should be a confined set, st set of standards very specific set of standards and don't bother with this bullshit DOS which can have a million different configurations <sighs> I said my piece Might Magic 5 on the MT32 Very beautiful soundtrack, but I don't actually use the MT32 for this one. I actually use the Sound Blaster. Because uh, this is a game that actually utilized the OPL3, I think. And uh, this, it sounds almost as good as the MT32, but all the sound effects are a thousand times better. So it really makes it worth it to actually uh, use the Sound Blaster. It's like the only game thus far that I found where I prefer the Sound Blaster to to the MT32. It's just little things like, like like that. That's just a bass noise. When you shoot the arrows, it's just a bass. But, you know, it actually makes a sound effect on the uh, Sound Blaster. And the music is very good on the Sound Blaster. And that's just noise. That's just instrument noises. Out the sound, check out the MT32 here. This is under a killing moon. It's a, oh, definitely a newer ish game, and uh, yeah, it doesn't sound anything very special to me. Now, let's see if the general MIDI is any different. No, it's exactly the same thing, it's 100% the same thing as the MT32.
comparison's sake, so let's uh, check out the Sound Blaster. not even OPL3. I mean, god damn, this game came out in 1994. You can't fucking make a Sound Blaster sound good in 1994? Check out this. Oh, yeah. As we heard how crappy that sounded. Let's, uh... Let's load General MIDI-ish kind of stuff and let's see how that sounds for it, if it sounds any better. Roland MT-32 was not capable of General MIDI out of the box. So we have a specific utility called uh, MT-32GM, which will be, it's now sending the MT-32 instruments to remap it into a General MIDI module. And it, it does a very good job of it, by the way. It's like, they're all new instruments being sent to it, remapped to uh, be correct with the general MIDI format. I've now loaded up the uh, MT32 uh, general MIDI file. Let's see if it sounds any different. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you can play the game like that. Definitely, it's better than the Sound Blaster, that's for sure. I hope you all enjoy the uh, You're Not Stupid Guide on the MT32, getting to work in DOS. I was not sure at first if this should be a You're Not Stupid Guide or if it should be a Retro Goodness. Um, I wasn't sure about that. I decided I'm going to do a strange thing and make the part one where I'm looking at it on the computer and as a You're Not Stupid Guide, and the part two where I'm looking at it as a real synthesizer. I'm going to make that a Retro Goodness episode. So we're going to get one for each uh, series there. So anyway, you'll check out my part two on the MT32. And uh, check out my last video, which will probably be uh, my Retro Goodness on Super 8 film. And, uh, different uh, stuff I do with that stuff. I really like Super 8 film, so I hope you'll like, be interested in that. So. Hit the like button.